What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today I have a super exciting video planned for you guys. It is the most requested video I've ever gotten. This is like the number one question you guys ask me and it is how I edit my Instagram photos. In case you aren't already following along on my Instagram, I'll have my handle right here. It's at seriously and then it will also be linked down below in the description box in case you want to check it out. And before we get started in this video, I just want to give you guys a big thank you. I cannot believe we reached a thousand subscribers. It is unbelievable. You guys always never fail to blow me away. So thank you again so much for all your support and friendship. And as promised, here's the video on how I edit my Instagram photos. So let's get on into it. Okay, so the first thing I do is I open Lightroom on my desktop. This is the desktop version, so you do have to pay for it. Um, but this is where I edit all of my photos, and I will just show you all of the steps that I take to get the final result. So, I have a few images imported already that I'm going to edit today. And I will start with this one right here. There's a few different presets that I like to use. Um, so what I did is I selected the photo and went over to the develop tab and over here on the left hand side you can see um, a list of all my presets. So as you guys probably already know the presets that I use most often are Zoe Labs presets and JJ Lovely presets by Jessica Janae Photography. Once my photo is imported and it's in the develop tab I will go over to these presets and we'll kind of hover over and decide which one I feel like fits the image best. Um, the ones I stick to the most are Zoe Laz, the black and white one, and then JJ Lovely 3. And that's actually the one that I'm going to use for this photo today because I feel like it gives it a really nice filmy look. And I'm going to go over here to the right hand side. The first thing I like to adjust is the exposure. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit, not too much. And I will also bring, yeah, I will bring the blacks up just a little bit and the shadows down just a smidge. Um, another thing I like to play with is the saturation, sorry, not saturation, the temperature up here. And I like to adjust it just a little bit. Making my first adjustments, another thing I will do is go down to the tone curves and I like to drag this up just a little bit, not too much, um, but I don't want the highlights too muted. So right there is about good. And scrolling down, as you guys can see, if I zoom in, there isn't much color on my lips. So I'm going to bring up the red saturation until it brings a little more color to that. And that looks about good. So um, another trick I like to use is to play with the yellow luminance. As you guys can see, it really changes the photo up. It's a great tip to bring out highlights in your hair, but you never want to overdo it too much, so I would say right there at 45 looks about good. Um, as you guys can see from zooming in to my pants, they're very blue, so I don't want my whites to look blue. The fastest way to change that is to increase the blue luminance, and you can also bring down the saturation and that's going to bring back those whites. So right now that's what we're working with so far as a before and after. Alright, moving on to the next, let's see, occasionally I will go into split toning. I like to add a little color to the shadows. This middle one tends to bring some warmth into the picture. Um, for this photo I will keep that maybe at about 5, nothing too crazy. And scrolling down, another tip I like to use is you can go and click Enable Profile Corrections. This will get rid of any distortions that your camera lens has put on the photo. Um, but for this instance, I'm going to leave it on. You can also edit those manually. But right now, everything looks pretty good. So, the grain on this preset is already set, but you can adjust that accordingly just like with your personal preference. And then, let's see. Sometimes I will play with calibration and the blue primary um, when you bring the saturation up. Sometimes it will 
kind of bring more life to skin tones and things like that. You can just kind of play around. That's a fun way to adjust presets to your own taste. And I'm just gonna increase that just a little bit. So right there looks about good. And the photo's looking pretty much done. If I'm making any last adjustments, it will probably be up here in the highlights. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna drag the highlights down just a little bit to save some detail. And a little more blacks. So, change my mind. Okay, so that is the finished photo. This is the before and after, and that is using the JJ Lovely presets. So, there you have it. Okay, so moving on to the next photo, let's go over to this one right here. It's a little bit closer up of the same shoot. Um, again, I will usually just scroll through, see what preset I like the best for the photo. And for this one, I'm actually going to go to her black and white preset. And it's pretty much one click. The only thing I would change is you can kind of see you're losing the detail um, from the highlights right around the hat. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down a little bit just to bring some of that back in. And that would be it for that photo. So there's the before and after. Super easy, I love that black and white preset because it just looks awesome with literally almost zero to no effort. So over here, let's go to some photos from Tulum. And for this one, I'm going to, I could really go with either, but I think I'm going to go with Zoe Laz just to show you guys how I edit this one. So for Zoe Laz presets, um, I like to bring the blacks up just so the photo doesn't look as muddy. And then I will bring the temperature up just a little bit. That's already looking better from here. Yeah, we'll keep the shadows up. And I might bring the highlights up just a smidge, just to bring some brightness into the photo. Then down here for the tone curve, I'll usually bring it up to about 95. Scrolling down, I always change the red saturation for my lips. So that's up 20%. You can even play with the luminance if you want your lips to look darker, lighter. I'm gonna keep it just where it was. Then here you can kind of see again the big difference that the yellow luminance does. Another thing is this preset already has it set, but keeping the saturation down on yellows is also another trick I like to use. Um, for here, we could edit the greens a little bit, but I think I'm going to keep them pretty much where they are, except for bringing up the luminance just a smidge. And then here, I'm going to play around with the blue in my dress that I'm wearing. So I like my blues more on the blue side than the teal side. I'm going to bring this back up to zero. And the luminance up just a smidge. I usually play around with the saturation. I usually don't like my photos too overly saturated. So I think about there looks good. And for this one, I will bring it just a little bit to about four. Moving down here, the enabled profile corrections is already checked and I'm going to leave it checked just so it doesn't have that vignetting around the corners of the photo. And over on the manual side, you can see that there's an option for distortion and I never want to overdo this, but it can be fun to play around with sometimes. The most I will bring it up to is 20 and then constrain the crop and you can kind of see the before and after, how it just kind of pinches the photo back and gives a little bit of a different perspective on the photo. 
So there's before and after on that. Um, looking back at it, it looks like I would bring some shadows or some blacks back into the photo to give it some more dimension. There we go. And then down here with the blue luminance, let's just bring it up just a smidge, maybe to 10. And I would say that photo's pretty much done. So there is the before and after, and that's with Zoe Laz 1. All right, another trick you guys probably already know of, but I'm going into the develop tab and then back to the photo I just edited. Then I'm going to hit command and click on the other photo from the same scenario and click sync. Then I will synchronize the settings. And now they both have the same edits applied. For the most part, this works pretty well. The only thing you really need to adjust is maybe exposure. For this, I'm gonna bring the highlights, sorry, not the highlights. I'm gonna bring the shadows down just a little bit and the exposure. And I would say that that is done for both of those photos. That's a great way to edit a big batch of photos from the same shoot um, without having to redo all of your edits on each photo. So here I'm moving on to this satin dress. We shot this literally off the side of the road. And so yeah, super fun. The easiest shoots are the best shoots. But for this one, I'm thinking probably go with Zoe Laz one because I feel like it will save more of the pinks in the dress. And as you can see, the photo is pretty washed out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring the exposure down, bring back some detail. Then I'm going to bring the blacks up just a little bit, maybe the shadows down. That looks about right. From there, bring the tone curve up. I use a lot of the same um, edits on different photos and just modify it for that specific scenario that the photo is shot in. Again with the lips and then I'll play around with the luminance. Right there looks about good. Um, another trick if your skin tones are looking a little orange you can bring the saturation down. I'm going to bring it to about negative two, not too much. Actually, yep, at zero looks about right. So there's a before and after on that so far. Playing around with the blue luminance, you can see that it is changing the sky behind me. And for this photo, I think I want the blues lifted a little bit more just so the clouds behind me don't look as gloomy since it was an overcast day that we shot this. Um, let's see, I won't do this on all photos, even though I have so far. Um, yeah, let's not do it on this one. So, back over here, profile corrections. So, I prefer this photo without the enabled profile corrections, so that box is going to be left unchecked. Then over here on manual, just to print the subject um, further into the photo, I'm going to bring it up to 20. You can kind of see how that pulls it back just a little bit. If you overdo it too much, you're going to distort the image and it's just not going to look right. So 20 seems to be a sweet spot for that. And then let's play around with the blue primary down below. For this one, it's obviously preference. Back here you get a more muted, neutral um, tone, but then it brings more color, more saturation as you bring it up. So I'm going to keep it at zero for this one. And looking back at it, I would bring the highlights. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring the whites up just a smidge and that will be my final edit for that photo. So here's the before and after on this photo. 
When I'm editing a photo, the number one thing I like to keep in mind is that I don't want the photo to look like it is super edited. I want to keep it as natural as possible, but still cohesive with the colors in my feed. So that completes the edit for that photo. Moving on to this one, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other close up. Just a simple edit and just apply the black and white. And I would say that that is a one and done one click edit and there's the before and after on that one. All right, last photo to edit is going to be this flower pick. For this one, I could go with any of the three that I use, honestly, the black and white, Zoe Laz or JJ Lovely 3, but for this one, I'm really liking the skin tones with JJ Lovely 3, so let's edit with that one. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is bring down the shadows, which I don't do often, but in this case I'm going to just to bring more dimension into my hair and really bring out my eyelashes. Then I'm also going to bring up the whites, not too much, and then I'll bring the highlights up too, just because I'm not really looking for that blue sky in the background. Then down here to the counter, the counter. Then down here to the tone curve. I'm going to play around with that and probably leave it right about here at 92.5. You can also play around with your skin tone on the orange illuminance. You want a tan. You want to be pale. Um, you never want to overdo it too much. But for this photo, I think where it is at looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring it down just a smidge. Okay, so as you can see, the center of the flower is more green than yellow, so I do want to kind of make that pop a little bit more. After bringing that up, I am actually going to, instead of changing the saturation on the yellow right here in the HSL slider, you can see what that does. It kind of changes the color of my hair just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, whoop. What I'm going to do is zoom in. I clicked on this little mask tool right here and I'm going to click in the center and I'm going to push the O key on my keyboard and bring the size down. Um, pushing the O key will let me see where I'm applying the mask and for that I want it just in the center and I'm going to move it to saturation and bring that up. And I would say that that's good. All right, moving down, I'm gonna bring the blue luminance up just to really bring up the whites and give that nice clean background. I'm bringing up the luminance in the green just to get rid of any greens that are in the center of the flower. Right here. I am not going to use this. For profile corrections, it's a little bit of preference, but I'm going to go with the corrections and then bring the photo back just a smidge, just so my face isn't taking up the whole shot. Down here with the blue primary saturation, you can see how it kind of shifts my skin tone and also the yellow in the flower. So I'm gonna bring that up a little bit just to about 30. Then moving up here, the last thing I'll do is play around with the temperature. You never wanna to go too warm or too cool. You wanna keep it as neutral as possible. So for this, I'm gonna bring it up just a smidge to right about there. And I would say that that completes the edit on that photo. So you can see before and after right here. And that is the walkthrough on how I edit my photos. I'll scroll through each of them one more time just so you can kind of see the before and afters. Here's the one with the black and white. This one was edited with JJ Lovely presets. 
over here we did Zoe Laz. You can kind of notice that Zoe Laz presets have a more bluish tone. This one was also edited with Zoe Laz. Here's the black and white. And then here's the flower pick. Okay guys, so that wraps up all my tips and tricks that I use while editing in Lightroom for my Instagram photos. I hope you guys found this video helpful and maybe learned some new tips and tricks you can use yourself and apply on your own photos. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments below. I've been thinking about putting together an Instagram series about all that fun stuff behind the scenes. And so yeah, if that's something you want to see, let me know. Give it a thumbs up leave a comment, slide into the DMs, let your girl know. Before you guys go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Bye!